Joining us on the Easter Automotive Group Hotline is the head coach at NC State. He is Kevin Keats. We have an ACC expansion welcome table for you, Coach. You know what? I, I don't remember you guys two, three years ago, even last year with all of this um, all of this stuff in front. You got you got Texas Pete. Mm -hmm. You got money laid out, which I'm a little afraid because that may be no, that's, NIL stuff. No, that's the money that SMU is foregoing to join the league. <laughs> that's what that oh, is. Boy. I should I walked <laughs> right into that one. I should have known it. I should have known it. Every coach has. Don't it's no yeah. big deal. And of course the bottles of wine from California to Texas, which is made in Winston Salem, so there's a little synergy there. And we have almonds uh, from Almond Joy, some fruit snacks. So by and I'm being serious, you can take any of this. Hey, by far, this has been the most creative um, table that I've been to. We try, Coach. We try. It's that podcast yeah. money flowing. That's yeah. what this is about, all that podcast money. Um, so when DJ Burns rolls up, is it still just the celebs here? Like, the bigger – I've been around a lot of NC State basketball. And the thing that I absolutely loved last year was when I was leaving PNC Arena, all the kids that were hanging out waiting for DJ to come out. Yeah. And he was he was great with them all. I love that. And I think that, that, that makes fans, man. You know what? He has grown in so many areas. And, you know, everybody, you know, tends to see what he does on the court. Uh, but it's, he's got a huge heart. He's a big teddy bear. And, <laughs> you know, I, I, I said this before. You know, if he stops playing, he could come back. I don't know if he can win being the mayor, uh, but he'll have a shot at it. I mean, he is a, he's one of the most popular guys in our area. You have DJ back. You got Casey back. You made the trade with Clemson to get Middlebrooks. Uh, I like that. I hope, I, hope you, I hope you tell him, hey, man, you're playing state tomorrow, so he makes every shot that he takes. So you got, I heard you played ball in the, in the secret scrimmage as well. It was a secret, Joe. Okay, you're not giving that away because you, you jinxed the guy from Missouri. You said he hasn't been playing well after you were really nice to him at media day, right? Listen, you're the only one. You, he's been, for, for everybody that can hear us, he has been on this trade thing since the day that it happened. We haven't talked to Brad Brownell yet. We're, we're going to get a break there. He is. He he is. And, and when you talk to Brad, the one thing that I wanted to say is I wanted to get the release out about Ben before he did about Jack. And uh, <laughs> we're, we're going, you know, Jack Jack was a good kid and i um, excited yeah. about Jack. And yeah. so is Ben. Glad to have him. Did yeah. you get future considerations, though? Or? Well, we did. Yeah, you oh. did. No. did uh, Brad promised not to beat your brains in again. Well, hey, Brad had a good year. He so did. did we. <laughs> so, and that's a good way to transition to, look, the commissioner's forum talking about basketball and, and trying to change a narrative around it. And you did have a good year last year. Yep. Clemson had a good year last year. Miami got to the Final Four, and people just kind of shrugged their shoulders about that. Is it just as simple as we care about the Blue Bloods and that's how we gauge it, or is there more of a conversation point we can have to get people to get with the program that there's good basketball beyond the two that you typically see well i mean we're joe we're so proud to I, i'm gonna be i'm gonna tell you how tough it is this league's tough by itself mm -hmm. but imagine only getting five teams in how tough it becomes and so we're we're excited that we were one of the five which i also think is ridiculous for a league just to be getting five teams in I know there are going to be a bunch of arguments of why. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, we the were, net. it's the yeah, net. It's, it's the net. It's Ken Palm. It's, it's all a, that it's stuff. It's everything. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, obviously we have to do our part as a, as coaches in the league. we got to go out and win in the non-conference and try to figure out if that's the case, we got to follow the script and try to get better and getting teams in. But uh, I, I think it's a great league. I, don't, I, I do feel like when certain teams don't play well, or have a great resume, it kind of affects the entire league. And that's not the way the selection is supposed to go. It's supposed to be everybody should be individual contractors when it does that, instead of looking at it as a league. Mm -hmm. yeah. I worry every year you were able to do this a hard grade. You go get a guy, you replace it, you have a good team. I don't want to diminish, though, how special and unique Jarkel Joyner was because I, I know you added some good players yeah. but I'm not sure you can add a guy like that with a leadership position who comes in and just kind of unlocks you know the best of the rest of the players which I will continue to argue was really Jarkel's strength last year yeah. so, so you know the guys you brought in this year who do you kind of look at and go okay 
You don't have to be Jarkel, but I, this is what I do need out of you this year. Yeah, totally, totally unfair to anybody that I bought in. I mean, that, that guy is a, a generational guy. Mm -hmm. You know, we knew, I knew that I was getting a guy who averaged 12 points a game that played in a system that didn't have as much freedom as we did. So he, I knew he could, you know, go to 16, 17 points a game, which he did. The one thing I didn't know was what type of person he was. The one thing I didn't know was what type of locker room player he was and all that stuff. So, you know, we went out and we tried to find some guys, number one, that would be great for our program. I think when you get transfers and, you know, those guys are not on the same page, they can really hurt your team. But it's hard because Jarkel was so special. I like our group, uh, but I don't have a Jarkel joiner in this particular group, and that's nothing against them. I may not ever coach a Jarkel joiner in my life. I like, the, I like the kid from Arizona State. He's good. He's more of a Tequavion Smith. A he scorer. Can, he can score the Eater ball. Peter Upper. He can score the ball. Like if, if you guys are saying to me, all right, tell me who's closer to the guys you've had who are volume guys like Sebron or yeah. Jarkel Joyner and even Tequavion Smith, I would say it would be DJ Horn. DJ Horn will remind guys of those type of guards who can really score the basketball. They're wrapping us up. We got anything else? I can. Do you want a gift? You know what? I'll. You're I know, a teetotaler, I, I know so. Where, I know where you guys live. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'll, I'll get the. You already got your shift. Your shirt. Yeah, I got my shirt, mm -hmm. and I'm going to wear, wear the shirt. You're going to wear it around. I'm going to wear the shirt. Okay. I don't know where I'm going to wear it, but okay. I got a couple ideas when I'm going to put it on. Hey, look. Have you done the ACC Network set yet? I just did that. Oh damn it! Yeah. You should, have asked me. you should have asked me before that. <laughs> yes. no, yeah, you're right. You're right. That's it. You know that? E me on that yeah. one. Should have gotten to you hey. before that. Coach, we appreciate it. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. See you.